All right, so today we thought we'd try something new. We thought it might be cool to go to the Murray Farmer's Market and see what we can find there. Um, we're gonna cook a, a three course meal, an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. And we have no idea what's gonna be there, but we're gonna find stuff to cook. I'm gonna take care of the appetizer. Hannah's gonna take care of the dessert. And Turk is gonna do the entree. It ought to be fun. Hopefully there's there's enough stuff there that we can do three meals. Hannah's thinking something like a cobbler maybe, maybe a pie. We're not really sure what we're gonna have available. So let's go see what we can find. All right, we are headed to the farmer's market. Turkey's a little bit too excited. Let's see what we can find. So there's a lot of stuff. Don't really know what we're gonna cook yet. We're kind of trying to do a little game plan in here. I think we're gonna do some jalapeno poppers since we have some fresh jalapenos there with future visions. I think we're gonna do, there's, there's some good grass fed steak here. So I think we'll do a ribeye or some kind of steak and we'll do some potatoes. There's a lot of potatoes. So we'll do some oven roasted potatoes. Um, might get some corn and grill some corn to go on the side of that. And then I'm gonna get some fresh peaches and do peach cobbler. Peach cobbler for dessert. All right, let's go get our stuff. Uh -huh. Oh, that's what we need right there. She's gonna do a peach cobbler. These are perfect. They're very really, really right. Do you have jalapenos? You do have jalapenos. We need probably six of those too. Look at that. Let's get one of these. Oh, they're sold out of T-bone or filet. Hey, how's it going? Good, we want to get uh, two of the um, fillets. Okay. We're gonna add some bread. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, just uh, one box will be plenty. All right, we've got the groceries. We've got everything we need for a full three course meal. We do an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, even a couple sides. First things first, let's do this appetizer. We're gonna do some pretty simple jalapeno poppers. Start off by cutting the tops off of every one of them and then we're gonna split them in half. After that, we're gonna remove all of the guts, get it all out of there, and you might notice there's a blue glove on my left hand. Just trust me when I say wear a glove when you're handling peppers like this. The last thing you wanna be doing is, is touching all of these hot peppers and touching your eyes. Just trust me, wear a glove. Trust me. After that, we're gonna get a skillet. We're gonna put a block of cream cheese in it. Then we're gonna add a pound of sausage. I also like to throw in about a half a cup of cheddar cheese. And then we're just gonna mix that up together. Now, you can take a spoon and layer this into the uh, jalapeno shells. I found it works pretty well if you wanna take a Ziploc bag and make something like a homemade piping bag out of this. Just please don't do what I did and cut a hole the size of the Grand Canyon. This hole was way too big. It just did not work well at all. It's kind of embarrassing actually. But I have done this correctly and this is the easiest way to do it if you can cut a regular sized hole. With that being said, do it however you please. Now we're gonna take some bacon and wrap this around it. Um, typically, I'll go ahead and cook the bacon Mix that in with the, the sausage, the cream cheese, and the cheddar cheese. But I wanted to get a little fancy with this meal. You know, no big deal, but we took a half a slice of bacon and we're just gonna wrap them around the, the jalapeno popper. I typically prefer thick cut bacon for most things, but for this, get some thinner bacon so that it's done the same time as the jalapeno popper. And this is almost done. I wanna hit it with a little bit of a sweet rub just to kind of balance off that heat. We've got Meat Church's Honey Hog here. I love that rub. We're gonna put a link in the description for that. We're gonna take that and place it straight onto the grill. We've got the pellet grill going at about 350 degrees here. It's probably gonna take anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes to cook. You can certainly do this in the oven. I just like that extra smoke flavor it adds by doing it on the pellet grill. That's pretty much it for this recipe. It's pretty simple. Now we're gonna send it over to Hannah 
and she's gonna show us how she makes this peach cobbler. So now we're gonna get started on our fresh peach cobbler. You're gonna take five peaches and we're gonna start by peeling all the skin off of them. If they're smaller in size, you can use six. Just use your judgment on how many you need to use. These peaches from Future Visions Farms are perfectly ripe and we're excited to put them in our cobbler. Once you get them peeled, we're gonna go ahead and cut them into bite-sized pieces. After you get them all cut, we're gonna go ahead and put them in a saucepan on medium heat. And then we're gonna give them a good stir. Then we're gonna add 3 fourths a cup of sugar. Once you get the sugar put in, we're gonna stir it all together so everything's well mixed. And then we're gonna add a pinch of salt. And then we're gonna stir again until everything is well mixed. We're gonna keep this on medium heat while we finish the rest of our cobbler. We're gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 350 degrees. While that's preheating, we're gonna place six tablespoons of butter into our pan and go ahead and place that into the oven so it can be melting while our oven is preheating. Now we're gonna get started on the batter. First, we're gonna add one cup of flour and then one cup of sugar and then two teaspoons of baking powder and a pinch of salt. Once all the dry ingredients are in the bowl, we're gonna mix those together. And then we're gonna pour in 3 fourths cup of milk while we're stirring the dry ingredients. And then we're just gonna continue mixing until everything has come together nicely. Once the butter is completely melted in our pan, we're gonna go ahead and get that out of the oven and then pour our batter directly on top of the melted butter into our pan. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want the batter as evenly as spread over the pan as you can, as it will settle when it's in the oven. Once we get the batter completely into our pan, then we're gonna go ahead and pour our peaches and sugar mixture directly on top of the batter. Once again, you just want it evenly spread. It doesn't have to look perfect. And then we're gonna sprinkle some cinnamon over the top. Cinnamon is my favorite, so I like to add a little extra. And then we're gonna take our pan and we're gonna put it back into our preheated oven and let it bake for 40 minutes. Once it's nice and bubbly and the top is golden brown, we're gonna take it out, let it cool for a few minutes if you can resist it, and then it's ready to eat. This is such a simple recipe, but it's absolutely delicious, especially with some fresh peaches. Nothing is better than cobbler straight out of the oven topped with some vanilla ice cream. Now that we have our dessert made, Sam's gonna get started on the sides. Listen, before we get started on any kind of sides, I wanna show you something. This is what it's like behind the scene when we're finishing up a video. We absolutely demolished an entire quarter of this cobbler. It was that good. We accidentally left our B camera rolling and I found this, but I thought it would be nice to show y'all what it's really like. So let's get started on the sides. We're gonna do the potatoes first. We're gonna take these potatoes that we got at the farmer's market. We're gonna wash them, and then we're gonna cut them up into cubes. It's little bite-sized pieces. And we're gonna put them in a bowl. After we get everything chopped, we're gonna cut up some garlic. That garlic we got from Future Visions Farms. Uh, it, it's so much better than store-bought garlic. It is so much stronger smelling and tasting. But mince that up. We're gonna get some olive oil. We're gonna take that garlic and put it in a bowl with the olive oil and all of our seasonings. Just gonna do that garlic, some pepper, some salt. And we're gonna use another seasoning blend from Meat Church. This one's called Dia de la Fajita. Got a lot of Mexican spices in it. It's really good. I use it on a lot of stuff and we'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in that. Add a little bit of that to it and then toss your potatoes in there and uh, go ahead and stir everything up well and make sure that everything's mixed together and everything's got a lot of the seasonings. We do potatoes like this quite often. Uh, we use a lot of different seasonings on this. We've used a ranch packet before, which is really good. If you want to cut up some rosemary and some thyme and some other herbs, uh, do that and toss it all together, whatever you're feeling. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit more of that meat church rub on there and then we're gonna cut up some butter, about six tablespoons. Place that on top of the potatoes and then cover it up in aluminum foil. We're gonna throw it in a 350 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Just poke the potatoes with a fork and make sure that they're tender. We're gonna go ahead and transfer them over to a serving dish like this. And from there, we're going to add some freshly grated Parmesan cheese on top of this. We've used other cheeses before and they were really good, but we found this to be our favorite. Throw that back in the oven until it's golden brown and pull it out and it's ready to serve. Now let's talk about this corn. 
fresh sweet corn is one of the best parts of summertime. Go ahead and shuck that corn, get it all cleaned up, and we're gonna throw it on the grill. We've got the pellet grill set to about 350 degrees. We're gonna throw it straight on top of the grates and let it start cooking. While that's cooking, we're gonna go inside and get a small sauce pot. We're gonna throw about a half a stick of butter in there. We're gonna add a little bit of seasoning. I've used a lot of different seasonings and it all goes great with corn, but one of my favorites is just pretty simple. Some salt, some pepper, and a little bit of Creole seasoning. I think it goes really well together. Melt that and then we're gonna brush that corn as it's cooking. Now this is my favorite way to do sweet corn when it's fresh. There's a lot of stuff I do whenever, you know, you have some frozen corn that, you know, you have to add a lot to it, but this is so good by itself. Let's move on to the entree here. We've got two beautiful grass-fed fillets from Palmer Farms. I'm gonna go ahead and tie them up with some butcher twine. I want these to cook really evenly. So we're gonna form them into a uniform shape and tie it up so it holds that shape together. This way, edge to edge, it's gonna be the same temperature throughout. And we're gonna season this with a heavy dose of salt and pepper. A lot of salt, and we're gonna make sure that everything is completely coated. All of the edges and both sides. Be sure and dab up the extra stuff that falls off with the sides. This is a very traditional way to season a filet like this. We're gonna cook it straight in the cast iron skillet. Throw in enough oil just to coat the bottom and get that ripping hot. We're gonna use some more of that garlic we got from Future Visions. You get two or three cloves ready for after you flip it. By now the oil should be hot enough if it doesn't make that sound, it's not hot enough. Put them both in there and let them sit for two minutes and don't touch them. After a few minutes have gone by, flip it. You should have a good little crust. To be quite honest with you, this hot plate doesn't get nearly as hot as I'd like. So the crust isn't as good as it usually is. But it is what it is. But now that we've flipped it, we're going to throw in a few tablespoons of butter couple cloves of garlic and we're gonna throw in a few sprigs of rosemary. Now we're gonna baste this with that butter and oil and all that flavor. Keep basting it until it's all the way cooked. I always want to use a meat thermometer to make sure it's at the appropriate temperature. Hannah and I both like ours about medium rare. Once it hits that mark we're gonna pull it off and let it rest for at least five minutes. I like to take a spoonful of the basting juice and just set it on top of that. We're going to hit it with some finishing salt and let that rest for five to ten minutes. And look, we made a full three course meal with two sides. We got all the ingredients from our local farmers market, so we supported local business, we supported local farmers, and we had an even better meal because of that. I highly recommend you checking out your local farmers market and giving that a try. Buy some fresh, locally grown food, and you will be very glad you did so. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And be sure to comment on what you want to see us cook next. Thanks for watching.